Um, I've decided to take a last minute shakedown ride on the Vespa 300. So here's the Vespa 300. I've got a uh, milk crate on the back, just zip tied down. I hope that's strong enough. Uh, I got my Moscow bag, which today has camping gear, but you know, when the cannonball happens, it'll be my riding gear. Water bottles, some spares, and rain gear under the seat. Got the electronics set up here. Got a little bag where I'll charge uh, batteries, GPS mount, and got one gallon road of packs on the front for fuel. And uh, today's ride is going to be approximately 230 miles. I'm going to take the back way here from Columbia to such as Georgia and try to camp at um, two wheels tonight. Also feel very ill prepared for this and uh, I hope that there's not going to be a, a disaster. One thing I've learned already is that you can't put the scooter in gear and like stop. You have to hold the brake. So if you stop on an incline, it's a pain because it wants to roll. So I have to keep that in mind. Also, I can definitely feel the weight with the uh, with the gas can up front full. It's not too bad, but I mean the handling is already weird for me on the scooter with these little wheels. So what? It's going to be uh, interesting when I get up in the uh, twisties in the mountains. I also feel like I'm not wearing enough clothing. It's going to be mid 40s tonight. So I could be uh, set up for some pain. So passing the Columbia Airport, there's actually F-16 fighter jets right there. Uh, those are from McIntyre Air Force Base, which is, um, they're repairing the runway, so I think they're doing some kind of construction. So there are um, fighter jets flying out of our airport for the past couple of weeks. And uh, that's been interesting. Now, this the end of this runway right here, um, this is where there was a uh, plane crash one time about maybe 15 years ago. And um, I think it, it was there was the St. Patrick's Day Music Festival happening. And it was a couple of musicians, who, like the star musicians. I think one of the guys was the drummer for Blink-182 maybe, or Green Day or something. And I don't remember, but they uh, played the show and then they took off in the airplane, little private plane they were on. I don't know, engine failure or something and uh, they crashed on the road right there. Anyway, we're going west right now. Uh, this is West Columbia. We're heading um, out in the country. I actually might stop and have uh, breakfast or lunch, I guess. It's 11 o'clock. stop here this is 
the Moneta Drive-In Theater. Uh, an actual old school movie theater. Drive-in movie, they call it the Big Mo. And um, I've never been. But a friend of mine is a filmmaker, Chris, and he's uh, he makes these kind of low budget horror movies. And he had one of them uh, shown here, but there's the, there's one of the screens there. Maybe that's the second screen here. Yeah, so I guess that's the projector building. Pretty cool. But they have, um, oh, there's three screens. Third one over there. But they have, um, you know, real movies. Not always the biggest blockbusters, but current stuff. And then they'll do theme nights. Anyway, the uh, Vespa seems to be running okay. It smells a little hot. Maybe they do that. Um, hope that's not a bad sign. Yeah, I can smell. It just smells like a hot engine. Um, hmm. I just don't know that much about these things yet. So, onward. I was just reading the rules here and um it says you must wear your shoes at all time and do not use foul language i'll have to remember that okay wow i'm already at a half tank of gas and you know what i didn't i didn't set my trip odometer darn it so hmm I'll have to figure out how far I've been, but okay wait it just went up another bar Must have uh Must have must have when I turned when I leaned to turn it must have indicated lower All right, well You know what I also didn't do I didn't figure out For this trip where I need to fuel up So I believe I get a hundred mile range. And of course I have a full tank, a full gallon over there in the front. So actually I believe, yeah, the gas that's in that Rotopax is um, ethanol free. It's kind of low octane. And I think this, I've been putting premium in the Vespa. So I wonder, yeah, I'm back down to half tank. So I got a two gallon tank, so I got one gallon spare. So maybe I should put, go ahead and put that gallon in. And then I'll be full, and then I'll know I'll have 100 miles range, I think. the town of Ridge Spring, South Carolina. Don't think I've ever been here. It's an old gas station with a antique car. I just stopped because I had a text from work. I thought I was gonna have to abort this trip, but um, everything's fine. But check this out. Listen to this sound. Hear it? it sounds like it's snoring.
maybe the uh, maybe the engine is cooling down. It's really weird. Also, it's um, I've only been 40 miles, and I'm at a half tank of gas. So 40 miles to the gallon. Uh, I should probably be getting more like 65. Uh, and I'm not really riding it that hard, so. I don't know. but cruises very nicely it's way more comfortable than cruising on the uh, Royal Enfield I feel like um, and actually I think having that can up front um, that weight it makes it feel a little bit more stable it sort of slowed down the steering a little bit kind of tense. I feel like my shoulders are tense. I'm not relaxed yet. And uh, that might be because I'm just a little bit chilly. I'm hoping the sun will finally come out because otherwise I may have to put a layer on. But yeah, this uh, scooter It'll, uh, it'll get it.
hitting these curves. Oh, Hickory Knob State Park. I've been there one, one time and um, met my friend Ben there. He lives in um, North Georgia. And we met there and camped one time. And actually played golf. And it was, it was July. And it was the hottest round of golf I've ever played. It was miserable. It was like 105 degrees or something. And we both played terribly. So we're out there just hacking it up for hours. Uh, anyway, I was about to say, um, taking the corners on this thing, taking the corners on this thing and um, at speed, at speed is, uh, it's a little interesting. One thing I am planning to do is remove the side stand because um, it sort of late pokes out and uh, I feel like it'd be pretty easy to drag it on a mountain corner so I guess we'll I guess we'll find that out when we get up there but uh, I meant to do that and I forgot So we should be pretty close to the Georgia state line. It's 148. So I, I mm, I've been, I guess I've been two and a half hours, something like that. And I'm starting to feel a little bit of butt pain. I guess three hours in. So, I might end up putting a uh, extra pad underneath this air seat, air cushion. I think I might get a, one of those purple brand seat pads. Um, this will be the third one I've bought, but I've only really used it like once because I keep losing them. But um, our friend Brandon that did the Transamerica Trail on his CT125, he used one on the TAT and uh, he said it made a great difference. So I might get one of those and cut it so that it'll fit underneath the, um, the air cushion. Yeah, I believe, I'm seeing this water. I believe we are, yeah, Russell Lake. So Russell Lake is uh, the border. South Carolina to Georgia border. Um, it's the Savannah River. It, it flows into the Savannah River is what I'm trying to say. So, um, probably going to cross over into Georgia. I'm overtaking a car. Something um, I've never been able to do on the CT125 or really for that matter the the Royal Enfield Himalayan. So Steve texted last night to me and Ange on our never ending text thread. Um, he's trying to think of an idea for a ride next year. He's contemplating doing the four corners. You know, he lives in Maine, so that puts him real close to the start, if he starts there. And he bought this awesome BMW R1150 GS. Yeah, this is Russell Lake.
Georgia state line. He's got this, uh, I think it's a 2004 GSA. So it's the adventure model. And I am so jealous of that bike. I always wanted one of those. And the adventure model is the one to get because it's got um, the larger fuel tank and it's got a lower first gear is, is lower for a better off-road and it has different wheels and I think it has dual spark plugs um, and I'm so disappointed because I had a chance to buy one of those and I missed it my friend Clark had one that belonged to his brother. The, it was the exact bike I wanted. It was silver, it was a cool color. And he had a great price on it. And I couldn't make up my mind if I wanted to get it or not. And then I went on the Continental Divide route. And when I was on the, the, the trip, I decided that when I got back, I was gonna buy it from him. But anyway, I texted him and it, it had already sold it while I was gone. So I've been hunting and hunting for one. Just pulled up to Bowman, Georgia, just to stop for a second. And I'm going to look at the map because <clears throat> I'm making pretty good time. And I'm considering detouring and going to Dahlonega, Georgia before I go to Suches. So I'm gonna take a look at the map and get a little sip of something to drink. But yeah, this scooter's doing doing pretty good so far. Let me look it over. I don't see any oil leaks. So that's good. Hmm. Kind of dirty back there. I wonder. I'll check my oil level. Um, at the next gas stop. starting to get close to Cleveland, Georgia, and I'm definitely going to detour, it's actually not much of a detour, um, from Cleveland I'm going to go to Dahlonega, I believe that's a pretty cool little town, I think I've been there once, but um, one thing I need to do when I get to Dahlonega is, I got to look in my, in my bag, because I have a bad feeling I might have forgotten to bring my tent poles. I vaguely remember when I packed up at um, at Sealy Lake and on the Continental Divide. I have a weird feeling that I did something different where I like didn't put my tent poles in the stuff sack with the tent. So I hope I'm imagining this, uh, but I'll, I need to look in there and see. Also, I, I get comfortable rolling down the road on this thing, because it is really comfortable. But then I get to a corner, and then I remember I'm not on a motorcycle. And it freaks me a little bit because of the handling being a little different. But uh, if I don't have my tent poles, and that means I'm going to have to try to convince um, Two Wheels to rent me a cabin if they have one available. The website said they do cabins um, two night minimum on weekends. But maybe they'll feel sorry for me. Otherwise, I'll have to um, Try to find a place to stay in Dahlonega. 
which is 15 miles, I think. It's 15 miles from Dahlonega to Suches. And, well, to be honest, to be honest, staying at Dahlonega and not sleeping in the 40 degrees weather sounds a little appealing as, as well, so. I may investigate that anyway. I just had a really weird deja vu. I know that I've been here before. Um, I think I think I used to ride trials events at a place right around here. I had to have because I'm having major uh, deja vu right now. We used to turn there and then go this way. I recognize that turn. I've forgotten um, who it was that used to host those trials events. I remember now, this is, um, we're, I must, I'm close to Cornelia, Georgia, and we, we definitely used to have trials up that way um, every year, once or twice a year. I still can't remember who uh, was the, who, who the, what the person was who hosted. Um, I did not get such great, uh, results coming up that highway 441 you can see how it's just a gradual um, it's the first time I've ever had to hold the scoot wide open so I just checked in my pack and um, I didn't bring my tent poles it's gonna be hard to camp with no tent in the 40 degree weather so when I get to Long ago, I'm gonna call two wheels and see if they'll rent me a tent for one night. I mean, see if they'll rent me a cabin for one night. And if not, then I have to look for some place in Long ago. I knew I was gonna forget something. Dummy. It's a little bit windy. I guess I'm riding uphill into the wind, but I couldn't get the scoot to go more than 54 miles an hour. I guess you can't have it all. Yeah, this 300 is the uh, largest engine capacity allowed in the cannonball so it is what it is yeah this is saying uh, 47 minutes to Dahlonega that'll put me there at 5 o'clock that may be as far as I go today I guess it's a good thing that I uh, figured figured out figured out that I had no tent poles before I started to set up camp. I do have my ground tarp and a couple bungee cords that I might could make a lean to. And I 
have my sleeping mattress. I don't know, that's kind of crazy. I do have a sleeping bag. So I don't think I would freeze. Oh, I forgot to bring my uh, hat. My, uh, I forgot to bring my, what, I, what do you call them? Toboggan? Hanging out in Dahlonega, finding a restaurant, going out to dinner, and getting a hotel room is kind of sounding more and more likely. There's some mountains, yay! exhaust. Jeez. I'll let him get up ahead a little bit. Stopped here in Dahlonega and found a little German restaurant and had a schnitzel potato salad and a vice beer. And now I am headed up to Such's because I called I called the uh, campground or yeah I called the uh, lodge and um, asked them if they had a cabin available for tonight. And they said yes. So that's gonna be better, I think, than a hotel here. So I'm gonna hit the road up to two wheels.